Welcome to the Fort's official Tournament 18, Mateo versus Firework. Welcome back, Fort's fans, to game number 13 of the Fort's official Tournament 18 replay commentary here on Synergy Gaming TV. Now, uh, I believe we're in the lower bracket finals or the overall semifinals, so to speak. Uh, pretty sure. Map is Skylands. So let's uh, introduce our players. On the left-hand side, playing Seep, it is Mateo. And his opponent, on the right-hand side, playing Pinch Fist, it is Firework. So, Pinch Fist wasn't banned here. So I'm going to think that... Um, I did originally go through the uh, live stream and figure out all the players that were banned. They missed, or all the commanders that were banned, they missed one game. Game number seven, they never stated which commanders were banned, so I never bothered to do the rest. You can't really have one game missing, so to speak. So, um, I'm going to assume that maybe this was Warthog in this one, which is why Pinch Fist was allowed. Um, Pinch Fist is, can, be, can be strong here. You can see all the starting metal. Here in these bases, um, b basically the same amount as, as anyone else, but that's a that can be a big advantage for for a pinch fist player. So, look at this crazy janky contraption here that that firework is using to get his uh, fifth mine in his little node expansion here at the back of his base. Let's see what uh, Mateo is doing here, working his way forwards, doing the quick 10,000 RPM bridge building. Something I've never been good at in forts is building bridges. I try and do it like like. Uh, um, architecturally like structurally sound right I try to put an arc and stuff in it but it seems like in this game it just doesn't apply <laughs> Mateo selling off as many resources as possible here to try and gain uh, an economic advantage here he knows uh, no he doesn't know he's up against a pinch fist he will soon enough when he starts seeing how much building firework is able to do we got a quick swarm launcher here down by Mateo if we hit the F8 key uh, we are that's before the two minute mark uh, we do have a swarm launcher Doggos, of course, making noises in the background as always. I like the buzzsaw here. He's going to go for the uh, the quick disconnect, but I think Mateo sees that coming. We've got this uh, this right here. This is actually very, very smart. It's a very easy way to absorb some of the buzzsaw shots for a very cheap amount of resources. You don't need sandbags. You just need the blades to hit something here in the front. Uh, actually, relatively clever. <coughs> He's going to do sandbags anyways. Uh, they are cheap, and it is good to do, but the, just that initial bracing there uh, is good as well. Uh, second swarm launcher down right away. So Mateo going for that super quick swarm rush. Third launcher down before three minutes. We've got the upgrade center already down as well. Mateo is not holding back here. This is this feels like something he's practiced before. He's got this one kind of figured out. Great shot from firework coming from that buzzsaw. Doesn't get the disconnect, but he misses the entire wall here. Great laser beam shot using the buzzsaw from firework. <laughs> Actually, this is kind of funny because both players are going the exact same build. We spent so much time looking at Mateo, we never even noticed Firework doing the same thing here. He's a little bit behind, though. If you look at the, the timer on the third mine, you can see that Mateo is slightly ahead. Two turbines each. Firework going for that third turbine. So that's where the uh, the resource difference is going to be. Firework went for his third turbine. That is 200 metal, which is approximately that exact same difference between the two. First shot coming down here. We got Firework with his uh, sniper getting that target painted here. Just going to do a little bit of damage. Try and Oh, and he takes out the mine. That is huge economically. That is absolutely huge. Mateo saying oof in the chat. That is massive. 300 metal plus the metal that you're not gaining from it. Uh, you know, four metal per second uh, every moment that it's not being replaced. So that economically is huge. Another shot coming in here. The swarm's going for that, uh, going for the core, directly for the core there. But he's going to clip the mine at the same time here. Is he going to get the bracing up? Mateo a little bit slow, but manages to protect it. Okay, we're good. Survives. Shots going here. Firework absolutely applying the pressure here to Mateo. Loses a launcher as well. We are talking massive economic deficit here right now. Uh, we've got 300 metal from the mine, plus what it's not generating, plus the 200 metal from the swarm launcher being lost already. That is a huge economic uh, 
uh, what's the word I want to say? Bad comparison? No, economic difference. That's what I want to say. Bad comparison. What kind of moron says that? Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> economic difference. Great shot from Mateo. Even with all that pressure and all the shenanigans and everything happening to his base, uh, he still manages to pull off a life-saving buzzsaw shot there. That could be huge. That could be huge here right now. And gets a launcher as well. This is some top tier forts gameplay right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we strive to see when we watch these tournaments. This is amazing. Back and forth. Launchers and mines and mines and launchers and rockets and gunners and snipers. This is a legendary match unfolding before our eyes. Both players obviously still at 100% uh, core health. Mateo are uh, very, very close there to losing some of it with the initial swarm launch that came from Firework. He does have these upgrades done, though. We've got some Warhead launchers ready to go. Mateo, obviously, rebuilding the, uh, the economy, the launchers, the damage. So... Uh, we're not quite fully upgraded here. Still running on the, the two turbines. You can see here, though, looking at this right now, take a look at the resources here at the top of the screen. Uh, Firework was, was floating at 9,000 energy for quite a long time here, running on that third mine, where Mateo still rocking it out on the two turbines here at the moment, uh, sitting at a nice, healthy 4,000 energy in the bank. So... Uh, whether or not to say that three mines is good or not, there's smoking here. So uh, you can see these players are using tactical repairs, which is just awesome. Launcher is down, and now he knows that the seep is in the map. Firework. Uh Probably readjusting his game plan here a little bit. Now that he knows that Seep is on the battlefield, he's going to have some additional gunners here. The Garys are going to be playing a lot of pressure here. He's going to need them because when warheads explode, they turn into swarms. And when swarms uh, come and attack everything, things get lit on fire and Garys die. That's just what happens. Oh, loses another one. And, oh, the minigunner gets taken out as well. That is huge. Uh, we know the investment of minigunners. Um, suggestion as well, developers. Uh, Armadillo needs a buff. His AP minigunners cost way too much, and the upgrade is way too long to make them viable in a match. So, suggestion. Uh, increase the cost of the upgrade, uh, possibly, and decrease the upgrade speed to nearly instant. And just make it a resource cost, because they're, they're absolutely, they cost... Um, for, for the amount of time it takes to get them out and the amount of time it takes to replace them is just too long to make them viable uh, with, the, with the length of the second upgrade as it is. Great shot from Mike the Minigunner. Gets a bunch of Garys there. That was actually really, really good. Uh, economically, that was a fantastic shot. Uh, you know, you're looking at 100 and 150 metal there for a quick shot and the Sniper gets the Michael. The Michael, Michael Minigunner Drunk Nuke. Holy crap! Did you see that that swarm went through the opening here? That was insane! Wow, what a match from these guys. Um, we do know that this match has uh, has changed a lot from going through the fortress in the middle to just going underneath it. Uh, not sure if if that's uh, um, the plan from the developer. Great sniper shot, taking out the flak. Flak and Frank here gets uh, one tapped by the old. Uh, the sniper Roni. We got the the buzzsaw getting ready to come in here. Unfortunately, Mateo hits the metal there, not doing too much. This is this is uh, this is a really good match. This is a good match. This is uh, one of those situations though that we're gonna start seeing. If you're taking a look at the resources, look at the speed at which Mateo's gaining metal and the speed at which Firework is gaining metal. Doesn't look like much now, but when you see uh, things starting to happen and the repairs starting to take place, that additional mine that Firework has right now, that additional four metal per second. Think of that over the next couple of minutes. Four medals times 60 times how many minutes um, is going to add up to be quite a lot. So the sooner that Mateo can even that economic playing field, uh, the better off he's going to be. Now, that also doesn't mean that you can't continuously uh, apply enough pressure. And by spending those resources you do have and using them efficiently. Mateo floating metal, by the way. Um... By, by using those resources, you are gaining more efficiently and causing your your opponent to... Oh, great shot there! Misses the shotgun, and we lose that great warhead shot coming from Mateo. I don't know what the heck happened there, but he missed the shotgun blast. Maybe it was just a quick panic. Maybe the shotgun wasn't hotkeyed. Hard to say in that situation. And now, we all know from playing forts ourselves that getting the nuke shot... Uh, 
excuse me, with the shotgun is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, we have all missed them before, so it is definitely uh, possible taking advantage of that uh, seep power right there. Now, keep in mind, Firework is floating on 100% uh, commander ability here, but he doesn't have anything he needs to fire in return. He will probably take advantage of that here when the sniper comes up. So he can pop that ability, fire two warheads for 5,000 energy, and that's not right. Mathing. Uh, great, another nuke shot takes out the smoke launcher. This is uh, what a what a flip flop flirp de derp uh, coming here. Firework was absolutely dominating the map control early on this map, and Mateo manages to regain it, even though Firework has the slight economic advantage with his fifth mine. Additionally, here he's just having a hard time maintaining map control. You got to keep those snipers up. You got to make sure that your Garys aren't getting taken out, uh, and allow these warheads to to make connections. Now, this is one of the great advantages of CP plays. Very similar uh, in style, other than rockets versus cannons uh, in that situation. Two uh, commanders like Warhead, uh, Warhead, uh, Warthog, and uh, Firebird. Uh, Firebird trying to do that, that uh, you know, kind of keeping consistent uh, bases on fire, doing that economic damage. Warthog dealing additional damage, which is, uh, you know, draining resources, extra splash, etc., etc. Great sniper work here from Mateo. Another buzzsaw coming in here. Are we going to get it? No, it stays up. So he just keeps plinking away. And then, of course, um, uh, what was I saying here? And then Seep, of course, with the warheads getting shot, still does additional damage from the swarm. So you're kind of applying that economic pressure all the time. Oh, fantastic. This is looking really bad for Firework here right now. We are at 11 minutes and 38 seconds here in the match. Firework is, is fighting desperately to hang on here. This is a really good match between these two. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the the kind of the new meta. It's not really new, but the meta of this map is about playing underneath it rather than going over top, uh, or, or you know through the base uh, as it probably was intentionally designed. Um, let me know what you guys think. Another fantastic launch here. Swarms and a, and a warhead do some great damage here. Firework seriously having a hard time putting things together. Base is on fire. <clears throat> Gets the fire out there. Look at that tactical. Only one R key press. Only one R key press there. Firework just knows exactly what's going down. Handles that situation. Mateo still plinking away. He needs to get... Uh, oh, there it goes. Needs to get a uh, sniper in here and counter the sniper. It's, it's literally exposed. No doors. Nothing happened here. Um, great job. We've got some, some warheads coming in here. Misses the island. Hits some wood spam. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Lucky there on Fireworks Department. Mateo. Plinking away. Plink, plonk, plink, plonk. We got a uh, AP sniper. Looking good. I like to see that. Buzzsaw coming in here. Loses it. Third shot. It explodes. Uh, still just applying constant pressure with that sniper. Amazing. Amazing gameplay. I expect nothing less from players like Mateo and Firework. This is a fantastic match. Mateo here taking advantage of the economic uh, surplus, and he's just going to keep adding launchers and damage. It's a great thing to do. Taking advantage of the... Uh, to get the launchers to fire correctly, possibly. He did that, rather than coming across. Great warhead damage. Uh, unfortunately, we're just hitting hitting uh, a bunch of plud in the front. Plud is plastic wood. Uh, AP sniper shot. Just doing a little bit of planking to see if there's anything there. There is nothing. Um, it's looking like Fireworks is going to try and run the clock out here. Unfortunately, that doesn't get him a win. It would be nice to see uh, in these Forts Official tournaments the semifinals and the grand finals. Like you're looking at the lower bracket finals and then the grand finals. Uh, in my opinion, it should be best out of three. Uh, if you follow... Oh, there we go. <coughs> Finally, Firework comes back here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Gunners taking that out, no problem. If you compare, uh, you know, tournaments to things like StarCraft uh, Starcraft 2, for example. Final minute of gameplay. Uh, if you compare to games like StarCraft 2, even in their seasonal, like, league games, they do best out of threes. Grand finals are best out of fives. Uh, sorry, uh, semifinals are best out of fives. And then their grand finals sometimes are best out of sevens. So... Uh, you know, they don't, they don't mess around, so it'd be nice to see that the, uh, at least the, the lower bracket finals and the grand finals would be best out of three. It gives the players an opportunity to make a comeback, whether or not the, um, commentators want to do it that long. Uh, probably not, but, um, oh, great use of the, uh, the fan there. Take that out. Looking like, here we got 20 seconds left. Looking like Fireworks is going to run out the clock. Mateo, 
unable to finish the job. You can see what Mateo has done here too with his gigantic droop snoop that comes down here. Uh, let's uh, forces the rockets to go much, much further down, or forces the swarm, sorry, and warheads to go further down to try and come up underneath. And that is going to be GG, you guys. Oh, man, what a match. Mateo takes the lead. Firework with 85% uh, percent core health remaining. That is going to give Mateo the victory here. What a fantastic match between these two. Firework had the map control at the beginning, and Mateo manages to re- Gain it. What a fantastic lower bracket final match in this tournament. That's going to leave Eaton and Mateo in the grand finals. Make sure to stay tuned for that, you guys. This match, Mateo versus Firework. Seep versus Pinch Fist.